This Bible study is going to be a critique of Pastor Anderson and his Babylon USA. Now, the entire world is going to be under the dominion of the Antichrist beast, Mystery Babylon, as it were. So I have no doubt that the USA is indeed going to be part of Babylon. And indeed, if you look at Babylon, the original Babylon was Babel, which means confusion. When you read in the book of Genesis, when they tried to build the Tower of Babel, or Babel, depending upon what part of the country you're in, how you pronounce it, you've got the and the, Caribbean, Caribbean, tomato, tomato, you know, so there are people that pronounce it in different ways. But Babel, or Babel, you've heard of a baby babbling, well that means confusion. When a baby's babbling, they're not talking, they're just making noise. So the Tower of Babel was thought by historians to be where the original city of Babylon originally was. Now, you can read in the book of Daniel a lot of information about Babylon. And a lot of the false religious ideas came from it. Matter of fact, in the book of Daniel, it said that Ban uh, Babylon at the time was the greatest of all kingdoms. So maybe we should take a look at that real quick. What do you think? Now, if you want to read some interesting stuff, in 2 Kings, the book of 2 Kings in chapter 25, you can read where the Lord got angry with Jerusalem and sent Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, against it. And that's a whole big study in and of itself. But if you want to, you can read it by yourself. The Lord sent Babylon, the king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, as a sword, um, I'm sorry, as a rod of correction against the wickedness of Judah and Jerusalem. And think about it. Daniel was, you know, he was part of the, uh, the captivity. The Lord pronounced that they would be in captivity for 70 years. And they were. And then they were released and went back to Jerusalem and rebuilt it. You can read about this in the books of Ezra and Nehemiah. And, you know, if you've never bothered to read the entire Bible from Genesis, I mean, the Bible starts in Genesis, people. The Bible doesn't start in Matthew. I know most churches, they don't want to deal with the Old Testament, but that's because... When you read the Old Testament, you'll have questions that they can't answer with their false doctrines. So, what can I tell you? But you know what? The, um, the book of James, the first chapter of James, says that if any of you lack understanding, let him ask of God. Ask the Lord in prayer. The Holy Spirit will give you and reveal understanding and it's far better than Bible commentaries or listening to preachers. So, okay, First Chronicles 9.1. So all Israel were reckoned by genealogies, and behold, they were written in the book of the kings of Israel and Judah, who were carried away to Babylon for their transgression. Transgression means they broke God's laws, made him angry. That's what transgression means. Let's face it. So they were carried away to Babylon for their transgression or their sin. Here we go, Ezra 5.12. Now this is after the 70 years when Judah returned to Jerusalem to rebuild it. Ezra 5.12. But after that, our fathers had provoked the God of heaven unto wrath. 
He gave them into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, the Chaldean who destroyed this house and carried the people away into Babylon. Now here's an interesting verse. In Isaiah 21 and verse 9, chapter 21, verse 9, Isaiah, And behold, here cometh the chariot of men with a couple of horsemen. And he answered and said, Babylon is fallen, is fallen. And the graven images of her God, gods, and all the graven images of her gods he hath broken unto the ground. Why does it say Babylon is fallen, is fallen? It said it twice. Once physical, once spiritual? Possibly. I'm not the expert. But don't we read in the New Testament that Babylon is fallen, is fallen? Well, in uh, Revelation chapter 14 and verse 8, And there followed another angel, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city. Keep that in mind. Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Revelation 18.2, And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. So, the very, almost the exact same language in Revelation is also in Isaiah. So, Babylon has fallen. Hasn't happened yet, but, you know, it's a prophecy. Well, personally, I believe Babylon is fallen, is fallen. The actual physical city of Babylon fell, but then you have the spiritual application of the city of Babylon. Jeremiah. This is one scary book, people. Chapter 20 and verse 4. For thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will make thee a terror to thyself and to all thy friends, and they shall fall by the sword of their enemies, and thine eyes shall behold it. And I will give all Judah into the hand of the king of Babylon, and he shall carry them captive into Babylon, and shall slay them with the sword. Yeah, the book of Jeremiah, God was uh, most certainly not pleased with Judah and Jerusalem. Absolutely not. Jeremiah 21.10 for I have set my face against this city. What city? Jerusalem. For I have set my face against this city for evil and not for good, saith the Lord. And it shall be given into the hand of the king of Babylon, and he shall burn it with fire. That don't sound good, now does it? Nope. Sure doesn't. Now, in Jeremiah 25, 11, see, Jeremiah was the prophet that went to Jerusalem and the king of Israel, uh, Judah and prophesied that God was bringing judgment against them. And the people didn't want to hear it. I mean, let's face it. They didn't want to hear, you know, oh, after all, we're God's chosen people. God would never do this. You're a false prophet, Jeremiah. Well, everything that Jeremiah said came to pass. So, Jeremiah 25, 11, And this whole land shall be a desolation and an astonishment. And these nations, nations shall serve the king of Babylon 70 years. 
And that's exactly what happened. Okay, they served it. Now, next verse, Revel uh, uh, Jeremiah 25, 12. And it shall come to pass when 70 years are accomplished that I will punish the king of Babylon and that nation, saith the Lord, for their iniquity and the land of the Chaldeans and will make it perpetual desolations. So where's Babylon today? It's a desolation. It's desolate. There's nothing there. It's sand. Nothing is there. But that's the physical Babylon. Ah, but there's a spiritual Babylon. Oh, yeah. All right, read Jeremiah 51 and verse 7. Babylon hath been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunken of her wine. Therefore, the nations are mad or insane, not angry, insane. Don't we read in Revelation about the, the uh, ones that made the earth drunken? Let's take a look at that. Babylon hath been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunken of her wine, therefore the nations are mad. And that's Jeremiah 51, 7. So let's take a look at the parallel verse in Revelation. Okay, Revelation 17. Revelation chapter 17 and verse 4. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet covered color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand. Didn't we just read that Babylon was a golden cup in the hand of the Lord? Having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness, of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. So the woman is drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Now, I, I got a question for you. Some are trying to tell you that New York City or the U.S. is Mystery Babylon or Babylon USA, right? When did USA or New York kill the blood of the saints or with the blood of Jesus or the martyrs of Jesus? Hmm. That's a good question to ask them. And the answer is, at this present time, um, April of 2016 is probably never. I don't know. I don't know of any times that the um, USA is Kill the martyrs with of Jesus? I don't know. At least I don't know of any. So let's use the Bible to interpret the Bible. Now here's an interesting verse. Jeremiah chapter 15 verse 2. Declare ye among the nations and publish and set up a standard. Publish and conceal not. Say, Babylon is taken. Bel is confounded. Um, those of you who don't, don't know it, Bel is just a name of a heathen, satanic god. Not the god of heaven. Uh, Merodach, some call him Marduk, Marduk, is broken in pieces. Another false god. Her idols are confounded. Her images are broken in pieces. Isn't um, in Revelation, don't they take the image of the beast? So God's not happy with idols and images. Most certainly not happy. And Bell and Merodach was 
just another name of some more false gods. Okay, Jeremiah 51 and verse 8. Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed. Howl for her, take balm for her pain. If so, be, she may be healed. Verse 9. We would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. Forsake her, forsake her, and let us go, everyone, into his own country, for her judgment reacheth unto heaven and is lifted up even to the skies. Don't we read a parallel verse of this very same thing in Revelation about her judgment reaching up to heaven? Oh, yeah. I might be getting a little bit ahead of myself, but we may as well read this since it's here. Revelation chapter 18, verse 2. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great has fallen, has fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations, all nations, have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth have waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Revelation 18.10 Standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city, Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. Jeremiah 51, verse 37 and Babylon shall become heaps, a dwelling place for dragons. Keep that in mind, a dwelling place for dragons. An astonishment and an hissing without an inhabitant. Dragons. Where have we read that before? Okay, Revelation 20 and verse 2. And he laid hold on the dragon. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Revelation 12, 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. So is it just Babylon, USA, or is it the whole world? says, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So, evidently, the dragon, called the devil and Satan, is going to deceive the whole world. That includes New York, USA. Well, that's everywhere, right? Didn't we read about the... Um, how all the kings had committed fornication with the woman? Well, in Revelation, turn to Ezekiel 23 and verse 17. Now, here's an interesting verse. And, you know, I hear people say that, oh, well, you know, I don't understand the book of Revelation. Well, there's a reason for that. Revelation draws all of its symbolisms from the rest of the Bible. So if you've never read the Bible in its entirety, you wouldn't know what the symbolism, where it comes from. Okay, Ezekiel 23, 17. And the Babylonians came to her, that's Jerusalem, and the Babylonians came to her into the bed of love, and they defiled her with their whoredom, and she was polluted with them, and her mind was alienated from them. Now, you know, 
if you want, you could read the entire verse, the entire chapter, and see that I'm not pulling verses out of context, okay? I mean, let's face it. Babylon and the mystery religion goes back all the way to the book of Genesis. I mean, let's face it. When you read about the Tower of Babel, this that was the that was the beginning people that was the beginning of the babylonian religion and it permeates everywhere didn't we read where it says that the devil deceiveth the whole world yeah the whole world everywhere not just usa everywhere okay daniel chapter 3 verse 1 Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold. This is an idol, people, an image of gold, an idol, whose height was three score cubits and the breadth thereof six cubits. And he set it up in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king sent to gather together the princes, the governors, the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. And um, then the princes, the governors, the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces were gathered together unto the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. And they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then an herald cried aloud, To you it is commanded, O people, nations and language that at what time you hear the sound of the coronet flute harp sackbut psaltery dulcimer and all kinds of music ye fall down and worship ye fall down and worship the golden image that nebuchadnezzar the king hath set up and whosoever follows not down and worshipeth worshipeth shall the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace so Nebuchadnezzar is mocking God by setting up a golden image of himself and wants people to worship him as God. Now, do you remember the story of the three Hebrew children that were thrown into the furnace of fire? Well, this is it, people. So you had Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They refused to do it, and they were thrown into the fire. Well, they weren't hurt. So, this parallel is going to happen again. Mystery Babylon. There, there's going to be an image of the beast. It's going to happen. So, where are we going with all this? Let's take a look. Let's use the Bible to explain the Bible. You know, you should read the entire third chapter of Daniel and the fourth chapter as well. Because Nebuchadnezzar is lifting himself up as a god. And the Lord is going to say, nope, nope, I am the only most high God. Well, and guess what? Satan, who is the power behind Nebuchadnezzar, is going to try to set up the same thing in the future, and that's the one that's foretold in the book of Revelation. So let's take a look. All right, let's take a look at uh, Daniel chapter 5. Now, like I say, if you've never read the entire New Testament, uh, Old Testament, the New Testament symbolism in Revelation is, is not going to make any sense. All right, let's go to Daniel chapter 5 and verse 18. Uh, remember the finger that did the writing on the wall? Well, this is the continuation of that story. You know, uh, that's a thing. I am never amazed at the ignorance of Ignorance means not knowing something. 
Um, I am ignorant about rocket science. I am ignorant about brain surgery. I don't know. That's what ignorant means. It doesn't mean you're stupid. It just means that you don't know something about a subject. I mean, if you've never read the stories of the ancient Greeks, well, you'd be ignorant on that subject. All right, Cha Daniel chapter 5 and verse 18, oh, 17. Then Daniel answered and said before the king, Let thy gifts be to thyself, and give thy rewards to another. Yet I will read the writing unto the king, and make known to him the interpretation. Well, this is the writing on the wall. You've heard that expression, right? O thou king, the most high God, gave Nebuchadnezzar thy father a kingdom, and majesty and glory and honor. So, Daniel's telling the son of Nebuchadnezzar, that the Most High God gave Nebuchadnezzar, thy father, a kingdom and majesty and glory and honor. For the majesty that he gave him, all people, nations, and languages trembled and feared before him. Whom he would he slew, and whom he would he kept alive, and whom he would he set up, and whom he would he put down. So, Babylon had control over all people, nations, and languages. And everybody trembled and feared before him. Verse 20. But when his heart was lifted up and his mind hardened, his pride, I'm sorry, and his mind hardened in pride, he was to deposed from his kingly throne, and they took his glory from him. So when Nebuchadnezzar, when his heart was lifted up and he was hardened in pride, he was knocked down from his kingly throne and his glory was taken from him. Babylon was arguably the greatest kingdom that the earth had ever seen. I mean, if you take a look at the area that Babylon had conquered, you know, according to the Bible at the time, it's probably the greatest kingdom that ever lit, uh, existed, even more so than Rome. Conquered a huge area, all the known world at that time. Okay, let's take a look. Pastor Anderson, is his text is going to be Revelation chapter 13. So let's take a look at Revelation chapter 13. At least let's get started on it. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. So they use this as a proof text to say that the city is going to be next to the sea. Well, let's take a look. What does the Bible say about the sea and the water? Well, let's have the Bible interpret the Bible. Revelation 17 and verse 13. These have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. And these shall make war with the Lamb and the Lamb shall overcome them, for he is Lord of lords and King of kings. And they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. That's you, people. Do you know that you're the called of God? You're the chosen. You're the faithful. That's you, people. And he saith unto me, Listen carefully. And he saith unto me, The waters, you know, the sea, the waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations, not one nation, but nations, plural, and tongues, languages. Did you catch that? And he saith unto me, the waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth, are peoples and 
and multitudes and nations and tongues. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh, and burn her with fire. Mm. So, does the sea have waters? Is there water by the sea? Oh yeah. The Bible explains the Bible, if you'll let it. Now, does that mean that Babylon has to be by the sea? Does that absolutely disqualify, let's say, Moscow or Jerusalem or Mecca or Istanbul or, you know, whatever? I've heard many, many, many candidates for Babylon. Mystery. All right, well, let's take a look. I, I want to take a look. I don't care what people say. Um, let's take a look at what the Bible, the Bible describes. It gives you the characteristics of Babylon. Let's take a look at what the Bible says the characteristics of Babylon are. Jesus had much to say. And I'm sorry, but I'll believe Jesus over Pastor Anderson any day. But that's just me. Okay, let's take a look. The Bible alone will tell you who this Babylon is. Now, physical Babylon was destroyed and, according to prophecy, was never to be rebuilt. However, there is a spiritual Babylon. Revelation 18 Let's turn to Revelation 18. This is a very, very important chapter in the study of Babylon. Let's take a look at it. Okay, Revelation chapter 18. Let's start in verse 16. And saying, Alas, alas, that great city. Keep that in mind, that great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. For in one hour so great riches has come to naught, and every shipmaster and all the company and ships and sailors and as many as trade by sea stood afar off and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What city is like unto this great city? Now, everybody's going to tell you, well, this, you know, they think this is New York because it's by the sea. Well, that's possible, but, you know, when the United States dropped the atomic bomb on Nagasaki and Hiroshima, how many miles could that be seen out to sea? I mean, many, many, many miles. You could see the smoke for many, many, many miles. It doesn't have to be right next to the sea. Okay. Uh, let's see. Verse 18. And cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What city is like unto this great city? And they cast dust on their heads, and cried, and weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness, for in one hour is she made desolate. Rejoice over her, Thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets. For God hath avenged you on her. And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus, with violence, shall that great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. And the voice of harpers and musicians and of pipers and trumpeters shall be heard no more at all in thee, and no craftsman of whatever craft he be shall be found any more in thee, and the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee. And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee, and the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee, for thy merchants were the great men of the earth, for by thy sorceries were all nations 
deceived. Now, sorcery is witchcraft, people. A sorcerer is just a male witch. Sorcery is witchcraft. Okay, now, take a look at verse 24. Listen carefully. They're talking about Babylon. And in her was found the blood of the prophets and of the saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. Now, and in her was found the blood of the prophets and of the saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. The blood of the prophets and of the saints. Uh, when did the United States kill the prophets or the saints? When did Rome kill the prophets? Rome definitely killed a lot of Christians. But when did they kill the prophets? Think about that, people. Think about that. All right. So Babylon was responsible for the blood of the prophets. Revelation 16, 6. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. Hmm. Revelation 17, 6. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. So here it is. This woman's drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admira uh, rate admiration. So Mastery Babylon killed the prophets. So what does Jesus have to say about this? Let's go to Luke chapter 13 and verse 33. I think we should listen to Jesus far more than Pastor Anderson. What do you think? Luke 13 and verse 33. Jesus speaking. Nevertheless, I must walk today and tomorrow and the day following. For it cannot be that a prophet perish out of Jerusalem. Hmm. For it cannot be that a prophet perish out of Jerusalem? Hmm. Didn't we just read that the Babylon was responsible for the blood of the prophets? Yes, we did. Yes, we did. Revelation 16, 6, For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets. For thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. Revelation 17, 6, And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. For it cannot be that a prophet perish out of Jerusalem. Ooh. How about Matthew 23 and verse 27? Oh, I'm sorry, 37. Matthew 23 and verse 37. Jesus speaking. I think we should listen to Jesus and less of Pastor Anderson. What do you think? O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets. What? I thought it was New York City or Babylon, USA. No. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets, and stonest them which are sent unto thee. How often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chicken under her wings, and ye would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. You know, you would think that all the work that... Um, Pastor Anderson did on marching to Zion and the Jews and their lies and all this other stuff. Why doesn't he catch this? That's a really, really good question. Why is he trying to make you think 
that the USA killed the prophets. The USA never killed the prophets. When? Unless, of course, you're, you think David Koresh was a, a prophet. I'm talking about Waco people, for those of you that are older and remember. Um, Revelation, go to Revelation 11, 18. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. Wasn't, didn't I tell you the great city? Babylon was compared and talked about as being a great city. And their dead bodies. Now we're talking about the two witnesses in Revelation. This is what this is talking about. You know, the two witnesses that come and confront the beast and the false prophet. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Now, I don't know about you, but my Lord Jesus was crucified in Jerusalem, not Washington, D.C., not New York, not Mecca, not Istanbul, not Moscow, but my Lord Jesus was crucified in Jerusalem, which is compared to a great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. Not Rome, not Mecca. So, who are we going to believe? Are we going to believe Jesus or are we going to believe Pastor Anderson? Hmm. Turn your Bible to 1 Thessalonians 2, verses 14 through 16. For ye brethren became followers of the churches of God, which in Judea are in Christ Jesus. For ye also have suffered like things of your own countrymen, even as they have of the Jews. Who, even as they have of the Jews, who, even as they have of the Jews, who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets. Who killed their own prophets? The Jews. Even as they have of the Jews, who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets, and have persecuted us, and they please not God. And they please not God. And they please not God, and are contrary to all men, forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they might be saved, to fill up their sins alway, for the wrath, for the wrath is come upon them to the uttermost. Can anybody show me from the Bible alone where Rome or Islam killed the prophets? Please let me know. You know, I am no friend of Rome. I hate Rome and the Vatican and the Pope, and I know she has murdered many. Islam also has killed many, but they're not Mystery Babylon. They're not the root, okay? They're part of Mystery Babylon. So is New York. So is Washington, D.C. They're all. The, the Bible says that the whole earth is deceived. There's no doubt about it. Did you know that Jerusalem is also built on seven hills. I've heard Washington, D.C. is also built on seven hills, as is Moscow, Istanbul, Seattle, and Rome. Hmm. Let's read Matthew 23 and verse 34. Jesus, Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them ye shall kill and crucify, and some of them ye shall scourge in your synagogues. Who hangs out in the synagogues, people? And some of them ye shall scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city. Matthew 23, 35, the next verse. That upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth, from the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, son of Barchias, whom ye slew between the temple and and the altar. Verily I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. 
O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets, and stonest them which are sent unto thee. Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets, and stonest them that are sent unto thee. How often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. Jerusalem as a spiritual center with Judaism is a house left desolate, empty, waste. What fruit has come out of Jeruz uh, Judaism and Jerusalem over the last 1900 years? Nothing. Nothing. And Zionists fall all over each other wanting to bless the people that have rejected Jesus Christ. What does the Bible say about Jerusalem? Let's take a close look at what the Bible says about Jerusalem. Did you ever wonder why there's going to be a new Jerusalem coming down from heaven in Revelation 21 and chapter 20, uh, chapters 21 and chapters 22? It's because the old one's polluted. Do you know that Jerusalem and Tel Aviv are the gay capitals of the world? Look up Jerusalem Gay Pride Festival or Parade on YouTube or on the news for that matter. Read it in the Times of Israel or Jerusalem Post. Gay capital, Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Sodom and Egypt. Oh yeah. Let's take a look at some things here. Um, Isaiah 3 and verse 8. For Jerusalem is fallen. I'm sorry, for Jerusalem is ruined and Judah is fallen because their tongue and their doings are against the Lord to provoke the eyes of his glory. Jeremiah 4.14 O Jerusalem, wash, wash thine heart from wickedness that thou mayest be saved. How long shall thy vain thoughts lodge within thee? Jeremiah 8.5 why then is this people of Jerusalem slidden back by a perpetual backsliding? They hold fast deceit. They refuse to return. Jeremiah 9.11 And I will make Jerusalem heaps and a den of dragons. Didn't we read in Revelation that old, uh, the great dragon called the devil and Satan? That old serpent? Oh yeah. And I will make Jerusalem heaps and a den of dragons, and I will make the cities of Judah desolate without an inhabitant. Jeremiah 13, 27. I have seen, seen thine adulteries and thy names, the lewdness of thy whoredom, and thine abomination on the hills and the fields. Woe unto thee, O Jerusalem! Wilt thou not be made clean? When shall it once be? Jeremiah 19.3, and say, hear ye the word of the Lord, O kings of Judah and inhabitants of New York City, no, Washington, D.C., no, and say, hear ye the word of the Lord, O kings of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, behold, I will bring evil upon this place that whosoever heareth his ears shall tingle. Jeremiah 23.14, I have seen also in the prophets of Jerusalem an horrible thing. They commit adultery and walk in lies. They strengthen also the hands of evildoers that none doth return from his wickedness. They are all of them unto me as Sodom and the inhabitants thereof as Gomorrah. Sodom and Egypt. Remember where also our Lord was crucified in Re uh, uh, Revelation? Oh, yeah. Jeremiah 44, verse 9. Have you forgotten the wickedness of your fathers and the wickedness of the kings of Judah and the wickedness of their wives and your own wickedness and the wickedness of your wives, which they have committed in the land of Judah and in the streets of New York City? No. And in the streets of Washington, D.C.? No. 
which they have committed in the land of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. Oh, yeah. Hey, let's keep reading. Lamentations 1 and verse 8. Jerusalem hath grievously sinned. Therefore she has removed all that honored her, despise her, because they have seen her nakedness. Yea, she sigheth and turneth backward. Ezekiel chapter 16 verse 2. Son of man caused Jerusalem to know her abominations. Now, all sin is sin. God hates all sin. But an abomination is a sin that God really, 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 really hates. Did you catch that? An abomination is a sin that God really, really hates. Caused Jerusalem to know her abominations. Malachi 2.11 Judah hath dealt treacherously, and an abomination is committed in Israel and in Jerusalem. For Judah hath profaned the holiness of the Lord, which he loved, and hath married the daughter of a strange God. Revelation 11.8 And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. And Jesus, my Lord, was crucified in Jerusalem, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. Last witness, Jesus in Matthew 23 and verse 37. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets, and stonest them that are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even even as a hen gathereth her chicken under her wings, and ye would not. And trust me, people, you know, the Bible says to go to somebody privately to discuss their um, faults. If you have a, a, something against a brother in Christ. Well, I sent this information to Pastor Anderson and also to Paul Wittenberg, Berger, or whatever his name is, the, the producer of the film. I sent all this information to them. Never heard back from them. What can you do? So, why are they telling you that USA is Babylon? I mean, indeed, the USA is indeed part of Babylon, but it's not the root. As a matter of fact, if you go to Amazon and you look up the Holy Book of the Jews, no, it's not the Bible, it's the Talmud. And pa Pastor Anderson does a really good job of exposing that. The word Talmud, T-A-L-M-U-D, means learning. Well, guess where they got the Talmud? It came from Babylon. There's two Babylon, uh, Talmuds. There's one from the Jerusalem Talmud, and there's the Babylonian Talmud. So basically, if the Talmud means learning, the Babylonian Talmud means Babylonian learning, or learning from Babylon. Yes, it came from Babylon. What can I tell you? Babylonian learning. See, the Jews would rather learn from Babylon than learn from the feet of Jesus. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of that great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Oh yeah, people. My opinion, I believe the Bible clearly teaches Mystery Babylon is going to be Jerusalem. The USA is part of it. Europe's part of it. Africa, Asia, the whole world is going to be part of it. But let's face it. The man of sin the son of perdition, the beast, the antichrist. He's going to set himself up in the temple of God. And where are they going to build the temple? New York City? No. Washington, D.C.? No. Jerusalem, people. That's where the temple was when Jesus went to Herod's temple. And that's where it's going to be in the future. I'm pretty, pretty sure. Now, yes, some of you are going to say, well, the temple is our body. That's true. 
Holy Spirit dwelling in every one of us, where the temple is our body. But the Jews don't have the Holy Spirit. They don't have Jesus Christ, the Spirit of Jesus. They have to build a temple with hands and do animal blood sacrifice, which is going to be, do you know that that's a total, complete, utter denial of the sacrifice that Jesus did on the cross. It's like spitting in his face. Oh, we're going to sacrifice sheep and goats and bull, the blood of bulls because the blood of Jesus isn't good enough for us. There's going to be a remnant of Jews that will come to Christ. It's going to happen. But in the meantime, look out, people. So check it out. Go to Amazon. Look up Babylonian Talmud. It's in there, people. Mystery Babylon the Great. Matter of fact, the book of Zohar, which is the basis for the Kabbalah, from Babylon too. So, and people, please understand something. This is Chaplain Bob Walker. I don't take donations. I don't ask for money. Okay? I'm not going to be selling you and me Babylon USA for only $19.95, plugging and handling. I don't do that. I have a dog in this fight. Am I going to get rich off this Bible study? No. I'm going to get rich. I'm going to get a bunch of hate mail. I have some sweet threats. I'm just... I'm just a, uh, a, a simple nobody that loves the Lord Jesus and tries to warn people. Keep your eyes on Jerusalem, people. That's where the Antichrist beast is going to be. That's where he's going to rule from. He's not going to be ruling from Rome. Now, those of you, um, I don't want to get into a big detail on it because this has already been an hour and I could make this a five-hour study easily if I wanted to. But if you take a look at the colors of Mystery Babylon, and everybody will point out, oh, well, that's the Catholic priests, you know, the gold and the, the purple and the vestures and, the, you know, the clothing and what have you. Well, yeah, the Catholic priests do indeed have those colors. But in the book of Leviticus, those are also the colors of the Jewish priests, the Levitical priesthood. You know, do your own research on that. Please. Um, personally, I think the I think Satan is using um, Islam and the Vatican to draw people away from looking at Jerusalem as being the capital of mystery battle. I mean, doesn't Judaism? I mean, let's face it, people. You've got people running around saying they're Christian Zionists. And if you're a Zionist, how can you be a Christian? And if you're a Christian, how can you be a Zionist? How can that hate the Lord Jesus Christ? I mean, it's not just that, the, you know, they just don't accept him. They hate him. In the crucifixion of the trial of Jesus, they were, you know, they were the ones screaming, crucify him, crucify him. If you read in the book of Luke, Pilate tried to release him. And they said, away with him, crucify him. We have no king but Caesar. And who shall I release unto you, Barabbas or Jesus? And they screamed, Barabbas, give us Barabbas. I'm not making this up. Read your Bibles, people. If you've never read the entire Bible, you'll probably be deceived. And I've heard, I don't know, I quit listening to Pastor Anderson a long time ago. Well, a while back. And I heard that John MacArthur, I've heard that Kent Hovind, and I heard Pastor Anderson all teach that one can take, a Christian can take the mark of the beast. And because of once saved, always saved, eternal security, that they're not going to go to hell. Well, the Bible declares that those that take the mark of the beast 
are thrown into the lake of fire. So, am I going to believe the Bible, or am I going to believe John MacArthur and Pastor Anderson and Kent Hovind? Personally, if we're here for the mark of the beast, I suggest strongly that you refuse it and get your head cut off, if we're here. Some people will argue and say, well, we're not going to be here, and I hope they're right. I really do. But just, you know, what can I tell you? And like I say, people, I'm a volunteer. I do this for free. I don't make any money on this. I have no, dis I have no reason to deceive people and lie, at least not for money anyway. So I'm not saying I'm right about everything. I'm just a servant of the Lord. So... This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. All honor, praise, glory, and honor to God slain before the foundation of the world. And that's Jesus. In his precious name, amen.